to just give you a quick overview of what the ninth grade schedule kind of looks like for your student, just so you get an idea of what types of classes they're going to take and what it may take to be successful in some of those classes. So we are on a seven period day. So all of our students are taking seven classes during the school day. However, some of your students could take eight classes because if they place into one of our zero period, which is, which is before school fine arts classes, our orchestra or band, they could actually be taking eight classes during the school day. Uh, so, and one thing you're gonna find out next semester in middle school is you're gonna get a form that's called a Carnegie unit form. And what a Carnegie unit is, is essentially taking one class for an entire year, you get one Carnegie unit, one credit. So you will have the opportunity to choose some of the classes that your students currently taking in middle school to count on your high school transcript. Well, our students are taking seven classes a day, so they're gonna get seven Carnegie units in a year. In ninth grade, you're actually going to get eight during the regular school day. You could get nine if you're in zero period. That's because you're actually going to take, during a two period block, your students will take physics and two engineering classes. So, but we, so they could, they'll learn a total of eight credits, minimum of eight credits in their, in the, in their school year. That schedule entails an honors and gift, honors or gifted language arts course. Again, all of our courses are honors, gifted, AP, or post-secondary. We don't, we don't offer any courses at the college prep level or below. Uh, so they'll have an honors or gifted language arts class. They will all have high school chemistry, an honors or gifted chemistry class. Now chemistry is typically a 10th grader, a 10th grade class. I'm gonna to speak to the math requirement in just a minute. And the, re and the reason the math requirement is in place is because the students need to be in a specific math class in order to be successful in chemistry in ninth grade. But also they're gonna be taking physics in ninth grade. Physics is typically an 11th grade math or 11th grade science class. So even more reason that you need to be in a specific math course or higher to be successful at this school. Of course, everyone will have a math course. Then, and in your ninth grade schedule, you really get two choices. The first five choices are all scripted for you. But then you get two choices. You get to choose a foreign language. Everyone must take a foreign language their first two years at GSMST. And it must be one of the three languages that we offer, which are Spanish, German, or Chinese. If your student's currently taking French or Latin, or some other language in middle school, and they wish to continue taking that course, they absolutely can. It will, but you will have to pay for it outside of the school day, and it would be an additional class on top of their seven classes that they would take here at GSMSD, because they would have to take one of those three foreign language classes um, that we offer. And then they get to choose an elective, and I'll show you what the elective choices were for this current ninth grade class that we have right now in just a minute. So on the screen now, you can see a, a flow chart of math. So you can kind of eyeball and find where your student is on this continuum in eighth grade right now to see where they could end up by the time they graduate from GSMST. The very bottom row, the very bottom row, is the row that Mr. Bright was saying is not eligible for the lottery because those students are currently in pre-algebra, which may say eighth grade algebra on your student's schedule right now or some other name. And those students would require five years of high school math to be able to complete AP calculus. And high school is only four years, four years long. So that's why that, if your student is on that path, they're not eligible to attend GSMST. The students that are on the rung, on the row right above that, if your student's currently in high school algebra one, they are eligible, eligible to attend GSMST. Now, Mr. Bray did mention that our entrance requirement was accelerated algebra, and it is. Because the students that are in accelerated algebra right now would be in the, the set themselves up to be in the most appropriate math course next year to be ultimately successful in chemistry and physics. That doesn't mean that if your student's in algebra one right now that they can't be successful. They absolutely can. It's going to take a little more effort on their part because there's going to be some concepts 
that they will not have been exposed to that they're going to need to be successful in chemistry and in physics. It's not that they can't do that. It's that they have never been exposed to that. Whereas if you're in the accelerated algebra right now, you will be exposed to that. So that, that's just something that you just need to think about is that if your student is in algebra right now, they can be successful. And we have, uh, I think we have around 60 students each year that come in and they're in that in algebra one in eighth grade. And they, and they can be successful. But it is going to take a little more effort. The third, the third from the bottom row, that's our standard math track, which a lot of you in this room are probably on right now, currently in accelerated algebra. And you can see where you can end up. You can, you can, on that track, you can end up with one or possibly two years of post-secondary mathematics before you leave. And we do have a partnership with Georgia Tech, which allows our students that are really a student math to complete four college math calculus classes before they graduate high school. And with those credits coming from Georgia Tech, they're pretty much transferable to any university that you go to, even if you don't go to Georgia Tech. Uh, we do have partnerships with other universities as well that offer some other courses, and uh, we're always looking for opportunities for whatever the needs of our students are. taken the first step towards becoming a part of our wonderful family. I am Sophia Mathani, a junior in the class of 2022. Like Mr. Rafferty said, interesting fact about me, I was the last student to get accepted into the class of 2022. I came an entire week after school had started, during which I had gone to Brookwood High School. I was a bit reluctant to come to GSMST because I had great connections many friends, and besides, I had heard many, to say the least, interesting things about GSMST. My friends who were already accepted told me that I was in huge trouble and should not come because the workload was massive and the teachers were mean and would not help me acclimate because of my late arrival. One of my friends told me that three days late was bad and an entire week was a death sentence. My friends could not have been more incorrect. The teachers here are amazing. They helped me cope with the culture shock I faced in my transition. Middle school was a walk in the park. I could easily finish off all my homework for the day in, a, in half an hour or less. On the other hand, this school is a completely different story. I got, and I still get, two, three, sometimes even five hours of homework. In middle school, most assigned work was meant to keep students busy so they wouldn't burn down the classroom. On the other hand, the work assigned here builds the mind and is an amazing challenge. My friends also told me that my sleep schedule would be non-existent because of the workload. That was wrong too. In the first week, I found that procrastination was a leading cause of baggy eyes, exhaustion, and sleep deprivation among students. In my case, I never pulled an all-nighter at this school, and I owe that small success to proper time management. Success at GSMST is comparable to a cake which needs only three simple ingredients. First, you must live in Gwinnett County, but obviously that isn't enough. There is another element. You must have to drive from the inside to come to the school. You may need to make sacrifices. Maybe you might not be able to play Fortnite anymore in the evenings. I sure was salty about that. <laughs> you might need to move activities to the weekend or even cancel some of them. But the community, the opportunities, and the facilities of this school are worth, in my eyes, the sacrifice. Finally, you must actively communicate with your teachers. That's what got me through my first week. Asking for help is a great way to push through struggles and succeed. If you do not ask for help, your teachers won't know you need it until it is too late. I could talk about the school forever, but I think that would take a bit too long. As I finish, I want you prospective students to think about something. Why do you want to come to GSMST? Think deeply about this question before making a decision, because success and happiness, not just at GSMST, but in life, come from within. 
And that idea of self-motivation is why we are the GSMST. Thanks for having me, and I wish you all the very best on your high school journey. And we automatically offer enrollment spots to the first 375 numbers drawn. So the 376th number that we draw is the first student on the waiting list. And that waiting list comprises all of the remaining numbers. And what happens is the students who have a spot, if they say no, or if they move out of Gwinnett or fail their math class or don't get promoted to ninth grade, then they don't remain eligible and their numbers are no longer valid. And then we give that spot to the next up and next up, and we just continue working our way down the list until we get to the Sophia's like we did when he was in the ninth grade. And you can tell that last year, we went all the way down to position 590. So 375 individuals were happy the day of the lottery, but we had 215 other people that eventually got to say yes or no, they wanted to come or not. So that's the way our lottery works. So you really have better than a 50% chance of getting to say yes or no. It just may not be in the middle of February, close to the actual lottery drawing. We will have a night in March for all of the people who have said yes, and probably the next 30 or 40 on the waiting list who will we know will get a chance. And we will have a curriculum night in March, and Mr. Rackley will go in much greater detail about the curriculum, give you a chance to uh, register for our summer school health and PE class that we offer, and those kinds of things going from the three o'clock dismissal bell until the time that they get into a place where they can be productive with their study, which is usually in a quiet place at home with a computer, but not a cell phone. It depends on how much sleep they got the night before. It depends on lots and lots of factors. Usually our teachers aim for about 30 minutes of outside work per day per class. They're taking seven classes, 30 minutes, so that's three and a half hours of four and for normal. Uh, students who work faster have less, Students who work slower or get really, really, really distracted or don't start working until they're already tired at 8.30, they take longer. And so sometimes the horror stories about the workload, there are other factors that you can control or your child can control that maybe uh, that didn't on that particular day. So the next person that's gonna to talk to you is our- Prepare for an assessment of and pass it the first time not go and take a test and read the questions and then go back and study those questions and do a retake and do a retake and do a retake or procrastinate all right middle school students how many of you are procrastinating and begging your teachers right now to turn in all of those pieces of paper so you can make a grade at the end of the semester raise your hand be honest okay you're not learning okay you're doing production work and what you have to do with note-taking skills, with learning, is to be able to practice the skills, learn the information, because it is that internal desire that Sophia talked about that's gonna be really important. If you're just filling out worksheets trying to get that grade on an eighth grade transcript that really doesn't matter because college is not gonna see that, you're not practicing the skills that are gonna be super important for the learning, because you've got to do the learning for it to matter. That A on that test the first time you take it. Paying attention in class and trying to make those deeper connections are really important. Practicing those vocabulary words outside of just the vocabulary test or writing the sentence. Actually incorporating those words into your daily conversation will help you make um, a deeper meaning about that. And we wrote in here 30 minutes of reading a day because you're reading so much in the classroom. But a lot of your reading specialists will tell you that kids that are behind on reading or just at grade level should really be reading an hour a day. And I will tell you why. If you um, look at those COGAP scores that um, your student took in the fifth grade and compare them to what they did in the eighth grade, I find this especially with our gifted boys. They quit reading in middle school and their scores go down. And so then they hit high school when they're having to um, read those harder textbooks, they're in chemistry, they're in physics, and they have given up three years of skill building for being able to read faster with deeper meaning. And so that's one thing that you can do right now before you even hit high school, whether it's this high school or another one, that reading skill is gonna be super important. 
you can't make those deeper critical connections in physics and in chemistry if you can't read the question and decipher what that question is asking. So really important skill, and parents, that's where you can kind of um, help your student. Now, in middle school, I spent seven years in the middle school, and kids love to copy down PowerPoint notes, and, and they want teachers to prepare study guides for them, and that's given the ownership of the learning to somebody else. You have got to be able to listen to the teacher and summarize the information. Harvard did a study on this and taking notes on a computer, which is we're in the digital world, that's what some people are doing, or they're just watching the teacher lecture from a computer screen at home. You're not connecting and your brain can go somewhere else and three minutes later come back and then you have missed a really good connection. And so that note taking where you're summarizing what is being said because that is where the learning takes place. If you can take three or four sentences that the teacher said and summarize it into your own words, you've just made personal meaning with that particular concept. And so being actively engaged with a note taking skill, like Ms. Scheid said on the counselor video, Google study skills and habits. And you can find hundreds of things out there. Begin to try on what fits for you because you've got to find something now that you can practice so when you hit high school, you already have those skills developed. Um, so the annotation of the notes, all of that should be creation, the creation of your own study guide for your own learning. You shouldn't rely on the teacher to make that for you. They're going over the information and emphasizing the important concepts in class. You should be paying attention and you should be writing that information down and creating your own study plan. Um, look at how your parents are managing their work schedules. Some of you are probably all in the same space at home working. That's really key, having a schedule, whether you put it on a whiteboard and you manage it, or you've got big sticky notes posted. Um, you've got to find a way that works for you to be able to manage that time allotment. And so I gave you um, an example schedule on that white sheet of how you can begin practicing a study schedule at home. And um, middle school has only four academic classes. You've got math, language, arts, science, and social studies. Begin spending 30 minutes um, on each of those subjects. If you finish your homework, then go back and annotate your notes. And then go back and make some study cards and really spend that full 30 minutes because you've got to train your body to be able to sit and focus for those time periods. It takes practice. It's like learning how to shoot a free throw. I love the example of Michael Jordan, who's one of my favorite athletes, um, retired now, but he never made his basketball team until his senior year in high school. He wasn't good enough. So what did he do? He practiced and he practiced some more and then he tried out and he didn't make it. And so he tried harder, but it took him three years of doing free throws and layups left-handed and layups right-handed and learning how to dribble and do all of those fancy things. And he became an icon in basketball. What we offer is opportunities that other schools don't offer. So those opportunities include our curriculum, which is different in many areas. But it's also the opportunities that we have that other schools just don't have because that's not the lane they operate in. We have a partnership with Pixar, the movie company. And so our students who are really interested in the movie industry, which is something really, really important now in Atlanta, have an opportunity to intern at Pixar. Students at other schools just don't have that opportunity. We have about 200 industry and business partners. Our students work in research labs. Our students do uh, journal publications and so it's not so much that if you come to GSMST, there's a conversion between a GSMST transcript average and an average had out gone to my neighborhood school. It's not really like that. It's more about opportunity and then you and your child taking advantage of all the opportunities that we have here. Um, let me continue on with our presentation. We're still on.